Hey guys, hi. Welcome back again to the sessions. Very good evening to all of you. Kaise hain aap log? How are you all? I'm very excited and pretty happy to again welcome you all of you here. And we are again once back here discussing few more things about this chapter. This is the first chapter, real numbers, and we have already concluded something around uh, three sessions, perhaps. And in these three sessions, we have discussed very good things, very important things, perhaps. I should not say good things, but yes, important things. Now, what we are going to discuss today is very simple topic indeed. But yes, I know it's a kind of pain point for many of the students. Irrationality proving, proving of the irrationality. There are so many of steps. So I don't know what to do, how to understand it, and why there are so many steps, which to write, which not to write, and blah 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 blah. blah. So today's session will not be very longer, but yes, it is surely going to be very much helpful for all of you. So without wasting much time, let's start how to prove a number irrational. So with this is today's session of real numbers. In this, we are going to prove how a number is irrational. And I guess you already would have studied this in class ninth also, but there are some conceptions, misconceptions, or some uh, doubts still unanswered. So let's answer them. So irrational numbers, you all know, irrational number is basically it cannot be represented in the form of p by q. So while proving this number, any number root two or root three or any number irrational, we will use the method of contradiction, where we will assume that number to be rational in the form of p by q. And then we will prove that that is not happening. So our assumption was wrong. So this is basically called method of contradiction. And in this, we will be using this fundamental theorem of arithmetic also that if p is a prime number and if p divides a square, then it also divides a. Now, how is going to be how this is going to be relevant? I'll just explain you there itself. And there is no requirement to prove use the whole theorem. I have just taken this theorem just to remind you that this will be used, but this theorem is not required theoretically to be there. You need not to understand the whole theorem. This is there in the textbook, I know. So let's start. First of all, we have we have the question that prove root three is irrational. Now this can be any number in your question in your question paper in your exams. But I'll just tell you how to prove one number, and you will apply the same method to every number. Say for example, if we have to prove root three as irrational, we'll use first of all we'll say that let root three be rational now once we have said this once we have said this i'll write root 3 equals to p by q because a rational number can be represented in the form of p by q now i'll write where p and q are co prime integers co prime integers always remember this is very important and apart from that, there is one more point that Q should not be equal to zero. This is very understandable. But yes, P and Q are co-prime integers. This is very important. Never forget this line. Okay, co-prime integers. Now, what this co-prime integers means, I'll just tell you. Say, for example, a number is there 7 divided by 18. So these numbers are not further reducible. They are, they do not have any common factor. So any pair of numbers which do not have any common factors further, they are called as co-prime. Now, co-prime never means that these numbers should be prime itself. They can be non-prime numbers also like 18, but they should not have a common factor in between them. That is very important. So always take care of this thing. Then it's co-prime. So in this case, P and by Q rational number, it should be co-prime. Now the first step would be squaring, squaring both sides. So once I do the squaring, it will be three equal to P square by Q square. Because root 3 square is 3. Now I'll do the cross multiplication. I will have 3q square equal to p square. Now I'll send this 3 to this side and I will have q square equal to p square by 3. I guess I'm clear. Now you just tell me that here p and q both are integers. So if p and q are integers, surely q square is also going to be integer. So this means that this number is surely an integer. Now p square is being divided by a number, a number 3, and we are not getting any decimal. This means then surely that this 3 is able to cancel this p square, is able to divide this p square. Otherwise, if it would not have been 
then we would have got decimal say for example just take an example say for example if i'm writing here uh, 5 by 3 5 is not divisible by 3 so we will get decimal i'll get 1.67 but 6 divided by 3 we will not get decimal because it's integer so in the similar fashion i can write q square equals to p into p by 3 and since it is divisible p square p square can divide p square can divide uh, can be divided by 3 so in this p square we have basically two p's one p and another p now if this 3 is cancelling this p if it is dividing this p square then surely out of this p square either one of the p will be divisible either this p or sorry either this p or this p because means p and p there are two p's so if this 3 is dividing this p square then surely out of these two p's any one p would be divisible so this gives us important conclusion this employs from here i can write down this employs p square is divisible by 3 and from here i can write down this employs p is divisible by 3 so if p is the divisible by 3 here if p is divisible by 3 then can i write it like this this employs p is equals to 3m if p is divisible by 3 then it should have 3 in itself this means it should be a multiple of 3 so i've just written that p is a multiple of 3 p equals to 3m now i'll just put this value back into that equation in this equation so what i'll write i'll write this employees right here this employees q square is equals to it is p square by 3 so in place of p i'll write 3m whole square p square divided by 3 so now i'll have q square equals to 9m square divided by 3 and this 3 will cancel this 9 into 3 times so we have 3m square isn't it so we have q square equal to 3m square finally and now i can again do the same thing i can send this 3 to this side so what will i have i will have q square divided by 3 equal to m square again the same funda that here this m square is an integer and this q square is being divided by 3 and we are getting an answer as integer so this employs q square is divisible by 3 and if q square is divisible by 3 then surely q square is nothing but q into q so either one of the q will be divisible so this i am writing that q is divisible by 3 so again this gives me an important conclusion that q is also a multiple of 3 i can write it down 3n if not exactly 3m then 3n so this employees i will write here p and q have a common factor have a common factor of 3 but i have just now said you i have just now explained you the meaning of co prime co prime says that these two numbers should not be further reducible they should not have any common factor and we had in the initial assumed that p and q are co prime integers but here we are able to see that p and q both have a common factor of 3 so i'll write therefore our assumption was wrong because we had assumed that this is being this is going to be co prime but this is this they have a common factor 3 so therefore our assumption was wrong what we have assumed it is completely wrong our assumption was wrong and this employs root 3 is not rational but root 3 is irrational i guess you all would have understood this and then the golden words hence proved isn't it so we have just now proved that how root 3 is irrational i guess you all must be able to understand how we did this and how is it uh, it can be proved in examination now if you have understood this we'll move forward and we'll see other type of questions related with irrationality proof only so this is the whole solution i have just given here for your reference you can refer this solution also okay so now some important operations that sum or difference of a rational and an irrational number always remember we had already even done this but i'm again doing this rational and irrational if there are two numbers and they are not same then whatever the 
operations we do plus minus multiply or divide answer will always be irrational and always remember and in because here also it is said product and quotient it is always irrational and if we do the same thing with irrational and irrational irrational and irrational means plus minus multiply and divide then answer is always in uncertain it can be rational also and it can be irrational also so always remember if you have the same number irrational irrational both side then answer will be always uncertain if you have rational and irrational different numbers answer will always be irrational and what about rational i guess it's not a big issue a rational plus rational or any operation of rational rational will always give you a rational number isn't it so i guess you all would have understood this let's move on to the next so here we have one more type of question that prove that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational so again method goes the same 3 plus 2 root 5 i'll assume it as rational first once i have assumed it as rational i'll just do the same thing 3 plus 2 root 5 is equals to p by q and now i am assuming that you would be able to write where p and q are co prime and all that now send this the rational number to this side so we will have 2 root 5 equals to p by q minus 3 now i can take the lcm i will have p minus 3 q divided by q 2 root 5 can i send this to also to the denominator so i will have i will have root 5 equals to p minus 3 q divided by 2 q isn't it this 2 q now now i'll write since p by q is rational this therefore p minus 3q because it's all integers divided by 2q is also rational but root 5 we all know is irrational so so what so irrational can never be equal to rational therefore our assumption was wrong our assumption was wrong and therefore 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number is an irrational number I guess you all would have understood this by this time. So let me tell you here in these type of questions, you need not to prove root 5 also irrational. You need not to do that. So don't prove root 5 also irrational. You just write it down that yes, it's irrational. So moving on. So we have one more type of questions. It is 1 by root 2 has to be proved irrational. This type of question can even be asked like this also. Uh, like uh, 2 root 3 is irrational or root 3 by 2 is irrational or 1 by root 2 is irrational anyways it will go the same so i'll again assume this as a rational so i'll write the first step 1 by root 2 equals to p by q if i have assumed it irrational uh, if i assumed it rational and you will write here where p by q p and q are co-prime integers q is not equal to 0. now we will do the reciprocal here root 2 equal to q by q so you all know that since p by q is rational so surely reciprocal of a rational is also a rational. So this employs, I'll write, Q by P is also rational. So if both of them are rational, so I'll write here, this employs, oh, sorry, but root 2 is irrational and root 2 is irrational and we know that irrational cannot be equal to rational. Therefore, therefore what our assumption was wrong our assumption wrong and therefore 1 by root 2 is irrational and hence the golden words that hence proved so i guess you all would have understood this now in these questions never ever be tensed that sir there are less number of steps how we are going to get the full marks this is the solution which even ncrt prescribes 
so don't go for the complete solution don't no need to prove root 2 as irrational once again you can write down this much step it's completely fine but yes surely if your school teacher is not saying if he is saying that you need to prove root 2 so you can do it proving in the school examinations in the boards it's fine not required okay so i guess i have made my point clear and if you have understood all of this this was all from my side for today's session today's session was indeed a smaller session but yes uh, i'm very sure that it's going to help you a lot in your coming days so with this myself harsh priyam signing off at this junction saying you all a very good bye with a promise to see you guys in another session next session till then bye bye and take care bye